Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE12933 here, and in today's 3-Minute Boot Camp, we're going to take a look at some spanning tree protocol port costs. We're going to take a look at some commonplace ones on some live Cisco switches in just a moment, and also one that you might not have seen in a book, but you'll definitely see it in the field sooner or later, and we want to cover that here today again on live Cisco switches. That STP port cost that I'm referring to is actually based on the speed of the port. And you can see these costs, and we will in just a moment, with the show spanning VLAN command. You can change these costs either as a whole or on a per VLAN basis. You CCNP switch candidates, you'll need to know how to do that. Uh, but again, these costs run pretty darn well at their default. So change them only if you have a really good reason and you're ready for the impact of that change. Let's bring up the live equipment here. And I will run first off show spanning VLAN just to make sure I'm running... Excuse me, actually let's do show VLAN brief first. And we are running just our default VLAN, so now let's run show spanning VLAN. And since it told me it was an incomplete command a moment ago, you can see that what you've got to put here is your VLAN range. You can look at the spanning details for more than one VLAN at a time if you want to. But right now we're going to stick with VLAN 1. So here are the costs down here that I was referring to. And we've got our fast Ethernet 0 slash 2, 0 slash 10, and something that looks a little odd down here. But let's talk about these first two. I have fast Ethernet 2 connected to an Ethernet uh, host on the other side. So it's negotiated to 100 because it's negotiating, it's running as an Ethernet port. So that's a very common cost for you to see out in the field on live switches. But even more commonplace, really, is 19. That is the STP port cost when the port is running at 100 meg, when it's truly running at fast Ethernet speed. So we need to know that 100 and we need to know that 19 for the exams. That's a good idea. But you might nev never have seen a 12 in any of the charts that a lot of the books have. What this is, this is an Ether channel. When you see PO1 here, you're not going to see anything that says, you know, Ether Chan or anything like this when you've got an Ether Channel running. I configured an Ether Channel before I started this particular video because I wanted you to see that it may have an odd cost. It depends on how many links you have on the Ether Channel. I wouldn't worry about memorizing these for the exam, but it's good stuff to know. And let's run uh, Show Ether Channel Detail. If you're not terribly familiar with Ether Channels at all or you need some additional training, uh, Go to Google and put in the phrase Ether Channel Webinar and you'll find quickly a five-part video series I did. It's absolutely free on YouTube and on my website and a lot of other ones. And it's about 45 minutes of good solid training. So here we've got Ether Channel Detail that I ran and you can see that I've got ports 011 and 012 in this Ether Channel. So what I'm going to do is shut one of those down and we'll take a look at the effect of that cost. And we'll let that do its thing here for a moment before I run the command again. We see the line protocol has gone down. And when I run show spanning VLAN 1 again, the port channel is still there. The ether channel still exists. But you'll notice now it only has one link in it, one fast ethernet link. So it's going to have a cost of 19. Now if I reopen that port, what's going to happen? Do you think I need to do any rebooting or reloading or anything like that? Let's take a look here. Show spanning VLAN 1. I'll give that just a few more seconds. And you can see that it's still up and the cost has gone right back to 12. So again, there are these default values of the SDP port cost that you definitely need to know for the exam. I would know the gig ethernet and 10 gig ethernet costs as well. But also be aware that when you've got an ether channel, you may see a cost you're not familiar with, and that is just simply dependent on the number of links in the ether channel. And as links go down in that ether channel, which we hope doesn't happen, but if it does, the cost will dynamically adjust to that downlink being missing. Thanks for watching this 3 Minute Boot Camp. Plenty more on my YouTube channel and the main website. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE12933.